Well, hi everyone, this is Bob the Science Guy and Otis. Greetings from Northern Michigan. I decided to do a video today because some new things have come up in the flat earth. Now, as many of you remember, I have been talking about the five characteristics of science denial for a while now, and these are from Dr. Lee McIntyre. The five characteristics are cherry picking, conspiratorial thinking, promotion of fake experts over real experts, poor deductive and scientific reasoning, and an inappropriate expectation of perfection from science. A few things have come up in the Flat Earth over on TikTok lately, and I wanted to address them. Because one thing that I haven't really talked about is the inherent dishonesty and poor scholarship of Flat Earthers and their narcissistic belief that they understand things better than people who actually know about stuff. So let's go ahead and have a look at a couple of things. Now, many of you have seen this image before. This is one that's been making the rounds on the Flat Earth community for the last several years. How many times have you heard that this image of the Chicago skyline was taken from Michigan at lake level? Now, the reason that they like to specify it was taken at lake level is to make it even more unlikely. They fully know that this image was not taken at lake level. In fact, it was taken from over 180 feet above the lake. Now, if you put this into the Earth Curve Calculator and use just standard atmospheric refraction, this image becomes much less of a mystery. They also like to claim that this image shows all the way down to Lakeshore Drive, and it clearly doesn't. The bottom 800 feet or so of the Chicago skyline is missing. And you can tell that simply by looking at the Willis Tower and comparing it to an image of the Willis Tower up close. Uh, obviously, we're just seeing the very top of it. This is another example that's being touted by flat earthers, especially one by the name of Gene Techman, uh, where we're looking at the city of Chicago from St. Joseph, Michigan, again claimed to be from lake level. In reality, when you look at the YouTube video on Josh Norwicki's channel, who took this video, he clearly states that he was over 100 feet above the lake level when he took this image. So why do flat earthers consistently misrepresent their images and where they were when you can look at the real data and understand why it occurred? It's because they're trying to make an argument for a flat earth while demonstrating the globe. And they do this consistently. The biggest problem that you run into is that they make YouTube videos and they put this crap out on social media and then assume that nobody bothers looking into it. Which leads us to the subject of today's conversation. There is a $1,000 bet going around TikTok right now from a flat earther by the name of Jack. So let's go ahead and have a look at his argument, and then I'll give my response to it, and you can decide whether or not Jack owes me $1,000. Now Jack's argument centers around a very unlikely premise, and that is this article from the Louisville Courier-Journal from July 23, 1969, about a Louisvillian by the name of Larry Basinger and his friend Glenn Rutherford. Now, Mr. Basinger was an amateur radio enthusiast, very much like me, who decided in 1969 he was going to try and receive radio signals from the Apollo astronauts on the moon. So he constructed his own radio equipment using an old army radio, and if memory serves me correctly, an 8 by 12 foot receiver horn set up in his backyard and he was able to successfully hear radio transmissions from the surface of the moon on this rig in the presence of his friend. Now in light of all the evidence of the moon landings, uh, I think that this really is a very strange thing to make an argument for the flat earth out of. Now shortly after the first moonwalk, which occurred very late on the evening of July 20th, 1969, as I recall it was in the order of about 1130 or so, there was a conversation between the astronauts Armstrong Aldrin and the President of the United States, Richard Nixon. And Basinger claimed to have picked this up on Neil Armstrong's uh, headset mic. So again, this is quite an argument that the moon landing occurred. It's actually cited as one of the independent civilian verifications of the astronauts on the moon. So here's where the rub comes in, and this is the crux of his argument. He claims that they had to actually track the moon in order to receive these signals, and that is actually listed in the Courier-Journal article. 
However, this says that the moon landings did not occur because according to Jack, the moon set in Louisville, Kentucky that night at about 6.30 p.m., making this reception of this radio transmission impossible because the moon would have been below the horizon. Now, another very interesting thing is that this Jack claims to have been researching this for well over a year. And I actually spoke with him on a chat on TikTok where I said, well, if that's the case, then that deserves to be looked at a little bit. It certainly doesn't rule out the moon landing, but it's an unusual finding that needs to be investigated a little further. So let's listen to a podcast that came out a couple of years later. And I actually got the link to this podcast off of the Vatican's website. So that'll really set you guys off. Now, again, this is a podcast with both Ruthingford and Basinger on this podcast several years later talking about the experience. Let's have a listen. We were able to hear Nixon's voice coming out of Armstrong's earpiece. The moment that I realized this was working, uh, and I saw just how happy Larry was. That night, that event, that look in his eye, uh, that shared experience is really and truly one of the highlights of my life. I uh, essentially have so much glare coming onto my visor. I'm going battle. I'll film it, actually get battle, and then it takes a short while for my eyes to adapt. We were listening to a five watt radio signal from 225,000 miles away. I mean, the fact that he was able to do that just is astonishing to me. Now, this is a very good example of characteristic number one of science denial, and that is cherry picking. Jack is really hanging his hat on this particular broadcast and the fact that they heard Nixon's voice on it, while ignoring the fact that they're talking about it coming from the moon, talking about it being five watts, and talking about the moon being some 240,000 miles away, certainly not local. He overlooked all of that because he thought that he had a gotcha. Now, what was that gotcha? According to Jack, the moon had already set in Louisville, Kentucky. Now, obviously, his first question is always, what time did the moon set in Louisville? And because his fellow flat earthers never bothered fact-checking him, they didn't look. So he was able to maintain that the moon was set and continue on with his argument. Well, unfortunately, I actually am a scientist and I do check these things. But let's have a quick listen to what Basinger and Ruthingford said about this as well. Again, on the same tape that he claims to have been researching for over a year. Not too great, but... Uh... One of them stepped on a cable. You remember that? Yes, yes, that's he said, right. said, watch your foot. Watch your foot. Watch your step. Yeah, watch your step. Yeah. Watch it, Neil. You can feel you're on the cable. Okay. Yeah, let's okay. have your right foot. Right foot. Uh, it's still, your toe is still hooked in it. That one? Yeah, it's still hooked in it. Come on. Okay, you're clear now. Thank you. Larry moved the antenna a time or two just to make sure uh, what we were getting was what we were getting from the moon. And it, and it was. When we're pointed at it with the antenna, we get the signal. If the moon moves out of the path of the antenna, the signal fades. And eventually, when the moon set, we lost the signal entirely. Now, those of you thinking scientifically may have picked up on a couple of things from those statements. First of all, the signals were only received when the antenna was pointed directly at the moon. And when the antenna moved off of the moon, you lost the signal. But there was another key thing that he said that I don't know if everybody picked up on, and that is that when the moon set, which was after the conversation with Nixon, they lost the signal. So what time did the moon set in Louisville, Kentucky on July 20th, 1969? Let's go to Stellarium, which is verified by Time and Date and the Nautical and Farmer's Almanac. But let's see where the moon was at that time. Recall that Jack claimed and tells all of his little flat earth friends that the moon set at 6.30 p.m., so therefore it wasn't possible 
to have line of sight to the moon. Let's go see where it actually was. Now, this is Stellarium, which is a free planetarium program that all of you can download from the internet and check this yourself. Notice the location is Louisville, Kentucky. The date, July 20th, 1969. This is the sky in Louisville, Kentucky at approximately 7.15 p.m. Notice right here is the moon. It is certainly well above the horizon at the time that Jack claimed that it set. But what time did the moon really set on July 20th, 1969? Let's have a look. Here's 7.15 p.m. There's 8.15 p.m. Here, we'll move it right up here so you can see it a little better. 9.15 p.m. 10.15 p.m. 11.15 p.m. The moonwalk occurred at about 11.30, as I recall. I was pretty young at the time, but I remember watching it. There's 11.30. Clearly, the moon is above the horizon. Let's go a little further. Now, the moon's coming down. It's going behind that little tree. But if you turn the ground off and see where the cardinal directions are here, you can see that it's actually still above the horizon. In fact, the moon did not set until about 12.08 a.m. the morning of July 21st. And if you look right here, it rose at 1.25. It went through transit at about 7 o'clock, which meant that it was highest in the sky. And it set about 9 minutes after midnight. So apparently our flat earth friend is confusing meridian passage with the setting of the moon. Meridian passage is actually when the moon is highest in the sky and due south of the observer. He thought he had a little gotcha and left it at that. And now another question that he raised was, why did the transmissions from the moon come in Australia, far off Australia, when Goldstone was in the United States and could have received it had the moon been up as well? Well, as it turns out, they could have, and they should have. However, they had a technical issue with the moon being very low to the horizon, and they also apparently had some operator error. And as a result, the backups in Australia received the message. Let's go ahead and have a look at those. So where was it picked up in Australia? Uh, many of you are quite familiar with the Parks Observatory from the movie The Dish. And as you can see here, the Parks Observatory is near the capital of Australia, and that, of course, is in southeast Australia, near the coast. However, that's not actually where they picked it up first, because the moon was relatively low to the horizon. It was actually picked up at Honeysuckle Creek, uh, and that is in, located in a similar area, but as you notice here, it's over a thousand meters in elevation. And if you want to see exactly where it is located, it's actually a little further south and a little closer to the coast. It's in the, what they call the Australian Alps. But again, it's in far off Australia. How could the moon possibly be visible so far away, yet still visible in Louisville, Kentucky? But where exactly was the moon in the skies of far off Australia at the exact time the moonwalk occurred? Let's have a look. Now an interesting thing about Stellarium is that you can actually change the location and even the elevation. But let's go ahead and see if we can have a look over here in Australia. So let's go to Australia. And we're going to head over there and have a quick look. Now something that should be quite interesting to everybody is that is that even though the time is exactly the same, you can check that, a couple minutes after midnight, about 12, 16 a.m. on July 21st in Louisville, but it's actually a little after two in the afternoon at the site of the dish. And if we have a quick look, what do we see? Oh my goodness, what's right there? The moon. How high is it above the horizon? Let's have a look. About 30 degrees. So it just came into range of the Australian dishes. This is only at 571 meters. Uh, we can actually move this a little bit higher to 1,500 meters or so, the height of the observatory, and that'll just cause the moon to be a little higher in the sky. Basically, this is completely understandable 
from a spherical Earth standpoint. Now your claim, Jack, was that because Larry Basanger received this transmission after, quote unquote, the moon set in Louisville, Kentucky, that rules out the possibility the astronauts were on the moon. In fact, you were so confident in this, you bet $1,000 to anybody that could disprove your claim. Guess what, Jack? You owe me a thousand bucks. I'll take a check or Bitcoin. Your choice. This is Bob the Science Guy and Otis signing out from Michigan. Y'all take care.